When you drink for a living, you come to appreciate a finer spirit. And when you drink with friends, you only open the best. Very excited to have both of you here. And I'm sure as you already know, like that if you're coming to hang out with me, we're definitely gonna be drinking something very good. And also, there's always a surprise. So are you excited? I am. Yes. <laughs> Anilo Matamid, I am so excited to be hanging out for some time with you today <laughs> because you were a judge on Top Chef and you're also the former editor-in-chief at Food & Wine magazine as well as Condonese Epicurious. You're doing like a side job as my <laughs> PR person. I mean, I love food and I love drink and there's nothing better than spending time with people who are passionate about the same things. Absolutely. And Jaime, it's so lovely to see you. Great I mean, we've known each again. other now for for what, 20 years? We said we'd keep that a secret, we'd but yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You are one of the foremost experts of tequila. Now you are the head of advocacy for agave for Proximo Spirits. I'm excited to talk anything agave, right? Anything tequila, Please. anything. We all sure. agree that tequila is our favorite spirit. At least for me. It, absolutely, and that's why we're here today, right? So tell me your relationship with tequila. Probably 20 years ago when I started as food editor of um, Travel and Leisure, I started going to Mexico and experiencing real tequila. This is the most exciting time in, with agave spirits that I've ever experienced, and it keeps on evolving, and the creativity is amazing. No, it absolutely is, and obviously you are actually from Mexico. I like was family, raised there, raised yes, there, my family yeah. is from there. There was always something going on at the center of the table, regardless of the event, there was always a bottle of tequila of some sort. It, it almost It's almost hard to separate, right? Like mm -hmm. where my identity sort of started to become sort of intertwined with, with the spirit of agave. No, I mean, tequila's brought us here today, right? Yeah. Which we are, I'm very happy about. <laughs> One of the things that I remember learning when I got to Mexico the first time as an editor, I was really looking at finding stories when I was there. And one of the things was sangritas. So oh, the idea yeah. of drinking your tequila, your good tequila neat, but then having these little chasers, this is the pageantry of tequila. This the ritual. This isn't, yes, the ritual it isn't of just about, side by oh side. my gosh, yes. and, and the sipping it and not trying to shoot it back and hope you don't, you know, you don't burn your esophagus on the way, you know? Yeah. Which tequila is should, like, not be, should not be shot Thank back. you, can it we just say that for everyone? Should not should be not, shot back, should we all agree? Yes, there's stories to be told, time to be shared. Why not uh, take your time doing so? And yeah, well, speaking of tequila, because now I'm very thirsty, because this is the Dobel 50, uh, which was actually created for to celebrate the 50th birthday, right, of Juan Dobel. It is a Cristalino, but we're going to talk about the fact that Dobel was the Amante, was the first Cristalino out there in the marketplace. A lot of people don't know what a Cristalino is, so I thought the tequila guy should kind of talk to us about it. So what we have here essentially are different H tequilas that are then blended together and then spe uh, specially filtrated, right? So what is the yeah. difference between the Diamante, Cristalino, and the Dobel 50? Well, Diamante is a blend of reposado, añejo, and extra añejo tequilas finished in Eastern European barrels. Mm. Dobel 50 is a blend of extra añejos finished in American and Eastern European oak casks. Why do they use two types of oak? Because I'm always curious about that. Am I stumping you? Yeah, you kind of just answered. <laughs> but uh, they have different nuances, right? They have different nuances, right? right? Different, different porosity. It's like a little bit like turning water into wine. It's turning <laughs> turning, <laughs> turning tequila that you would uh, look at and it would have like a deeper hue, the sexy age in it. Mm -hmm. And you take that away, but then as we're sitting here, I'm getting these beautiful vanilla notes, caramel notes that are kind of wafting over to me. I'm smelling it. As you like to say the word waft, a little bit of fig. Oh yeah, yes. I'm getting fig. Yeah. Yes, yes, Absolutely. yes. Absolutely. Um, I also get a little pineapple. Quince, maybe. Mm. Oh, quince, yeah. I went right to tasting. Yes, you I went broke. straight to tasting. I broke every wall. <laughs> I feel like, how am I going to smell if I'm not tasting? As we start to taste, I'm going to pick up on certain things. You're yeah. going to pick up on other things. It's what Very you grew personal. up on. Because that's where your memory palette, right? Your flavor palette yeah. is kind of in your head. You just like those, you kind of file them away, and that's how you become a better taster. It's a memory bank. Yeah. It's a memory bank. Yeah. put it better. Yeah. So I mean, should we have well, a taste? That said, let's confirm what we're I know you've already had some. I know, but I don't tell anyone. Salud. I get the weight yeah. of all those things we spoke of, right? A little viscosity. That rounded, that viscosity, that oakiness, mm -hmm. right? It feels like it's really just keeps on lingering mm -hmm. and it keeps on coming back. The flavor is so 
profound. So when we were talking about heritage, when it comes to our flavors and what we're tasting, but how does heritage for you, like where you come from, like influence like your career and like yeah. how you're drinking and your food? I spent so much time trying to hold my history away from myself in my attempt to make it in my in my industry in New York, mm -hmm. i.e. I was an immigrant and at the time where I, when I moved here in the early 80s, being an immigrant was not cool. Fast forward, I think we've all gotten to a place where the priority is authenticity and being authentic to who you are, being authentic to your traditions is so enriching. For me, it's imperative that people understand the culture behind Mm -hmm. the bottle, the people that make it, the hands that touch it. Ultimately, what I think tequila is, is that gateway. Mm -hmm. You know, we sit around, we open up a bottle, you know, you start to taste a little bit of Mexico, mm -hmm. right? This is Mexico in a glass. You know, the one thing I like in talking about heritage and, and things evolving and things being innovative and bringing it to life, you know, there's now this new category within tequila, which is luxury, right? What do you think is a luxury brand? I mean, I was so tempted to take another sip, but yes. Yeah, I, we can do, I, I, do that. Let's do that. Like, here's the luxury. Here's the luxury. And, and then we can talk about it. This just keeps on getting smoother. Mm. To me, to answer your question, now that I have a beautiful mouthful of this Maestro de Bell 50, luxury is craftsmanship, very importantly. The idea of authenticity and the idea of being able to go on an adventure. It's less about bling, but it's more about knowledge. Mm -hmm. At the end of your experience with something, you, have, you are enriched. Now the takeaway is more substantial in itself. It's what did I learn? How has this made my life better, to your point? Or do I have a better understanding to the culture? Everybody seems to like tequila, but I know something you don't. You want to be the person who, oh, in your peer group, is the one who discovered something first. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a big deal. Yeah. So bragging rights cannot be un underestimated. <laughs> no. While, while we're saying the bling is out, recognition is still kind of it in. Just looks but different. a different, yes, right. it looks right. different. I agree well, with speaking that. of things that are innovative, as I promised you, I was going to introduce you to something completely new in the category, so I'll be right back. All right. I love a surprise. Especially if it's a tequila surprise. <laughs> so this is the Maestro Dobel's Pavito. I have chills right now. I'm just saying, you invited us to taste something that has never been, been made done. before. It is the very first Pachuga tequila. What? I'm so excited right That's now. That's right. First to world <laughs> pechuga tequila. Can because, I tell you a little bit of how it's made? Oh, please do, because pechugas are some of my favorites. We're talking single estate grown agave, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. slow roasted, copper pot stills distillation, twice over, and then that liquid gets macerated with just local fruits, spices. You know, around Christmas time, we do something uh, called a ponche. Ponche! Ponche mexicano. <laughs> and if you know ponche mexicano, it's the same application. We use a lot of seasonal fruits, berries, and spices. So just imagine all these collected fruits put to macerate for days on end. That's how I know where I'm going for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So the maceration part, right, that's unique to, to pavito, which by the way means little turkey, right? Mm -hmm. We have a pavito There's a little front. pavito on the front. So then we apply a third distillation, right? We remove the fruits and spices. We hang a turkey breast in the still, right? Suspended above the liquid, not in contact with the liquid. And it's the beautiful vapors that go up, that collect and essentially sort of gather, right? Those savory elements, mm. the flavor profile from the protein. And then that gets incorporated, folded in to the distillate. It's like two worlds colliding. So when you talk about pechuga, my instinct is to think about the traditional method in Oaxaca where mezcal is made in this way. And so the idea of taking what is an ancestral method of, of creating a mezcal and evolving that to include its agave sister, tequila, is never been done before. Exactly, yeah. it's what's so exciting about this because it's so innovative, it's so different, but it's gonna just add a completely new flavor category to tequila. I'm so curious how this is gonna taste, but I wanna smell it more. There's definitely a, like a, a mint or a peppermint, mm. like a little bit. I get a little bit of anise, personally. Yes, yes anise, yes. yes it's I very floral bouquet, the sharp anise note. I'm getting the agave, I'm even getting like a more of a spearmint. It's got like almost like a built-in mojito. So I'm gonna share <laughs> one with you <laughs> that is very like yerba buena, it's native to Mexico, and it's hard to translate. There is no translation for it, it's mm. tecojote. 
it's a commonly used stone fruit that's uh, used in ponches, as a matter of fact. Closest thing I would compare it to is probably a plum. It does have a stone fruit quality to it. Oh, like, cheers. It's to new things. To new things. To innovation in the best way. Mmm. -hmm. This is where I get that slight savoriness. It's really silky, very creamy in the mouth, like it's, it's lingering. It's like a fiesta. They're an 11th generation of, of a tequila family. They've gone back to their roots, right? They looked at the ancestral roots of agave spirits and things that have done, but then they've innovated to the next level. What were some of the things that you've done to kind of like, I'm sure you've changed over time. Oh you yeah, know, you're not saying, there's so, no question, no. So things that you've kind of innovated, but you still stayed true to who you were. When I realized how much I'm really so so much more like my mom and dad than I, you know, probably tried to be as a teenager, and and really em familiar. embracing that. This is something new, innovative, yet it speaks to the things that I love about tequila. And I think that's how I look at my life. It's about be proud of who I am. To see a brand that's all about forward thinking, also being like, I haven't forgotten about what how I got here. Right, that's, that's who I am deal. at the core. That's yeah. a big deal. Let's say well yeah, done. Let's to do well. Salud, salud, salud. Maestro salud. Dovel. Gracias. I'm never leaving, just so you know.